Welcome to Surfaces and Splines, a series of video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. My name's Andrew Lowe. I'm an industrial designer with the Demonic Group. And in these series of videos, we'll be looking at the production modeling of this uh, work flashlight in SolidWorks. In this installment, we're going to be looking at splines. The key to creating great surfaces in SolidWorks is great underlying splines. And the way to know you have a great spline is analyzing them using the curvature comb tool. There's different best practices for creating splines that we'll cover today. So the curvature comb tool, it shows you the rate of change of the spline over time. And we want to have nice smooth curvature combs on our splines. So here we have a flat spot and this isn't as desirable. So let's jump into SOLIDWORKS. And here I've sketched a two-point spline. And the spline is manipulated by dragging these handles. Now see, no matter how I drag the handle, the curvature of the spline, the curvature comb, stays nice and smooth along its perimeter. It doesn't really have any flat spots or spikes or jumps. So when working with splines in SOLIDWORKS, two-point splines always give us the smoothest possible connection. Here I'm going to sketch a spline with multiple points over the top. So some people try and trace their shape by drawing as many points as possible. So if we were to hide this first spline and then show the curvature of this spline, we actually see we have this flat spot here. So turning off the curvature, let's investigate. If we zoom in, look how close we have to zoom in to see any appreciable difference. So the small, small differences in spline shape can have a big effect on the overall curvature and the quality of the curvature of that spline. So when sketching with two points, always nice and smooth. But sometimes I can't define the shape I need with a two-point spline by dragging the handle. So maybe I'm tempted to add an extra point in the spline. So I'm going to insert spline point. And here, see, this is the danger you get into when adding this spline, or this spline point. We have this dip this in the in the curvature here. It's not as smooth. You can see we can even make it really, really um, egregious. And I get into even more trouble when I start manipulating these middle handles here. So if I do have to add a third point to the spline, there's a better way of doing it. So here I have a spline with that uh, third point in it. And I've right clicked and I have show or display control polygon turned on. This gives these great little dots here. And by manipulating the dots instead of the handles, I can get a better overall result and it doesn't have as many spikes and dips as dragging the, the handle and the middle point around. The default for these curvature combs is actually yellow, and I've changed mine, so if any of you are curious, you can go to Options, uh, Colors, scroll down a bit, and it's under Temporary Graphic Shaded, and I've changed mine to a nice dark purple color. I find it shows up really well on a white or on a white background versus the, uh, the default yellow. But for those of you working in uh, SOLIDWORKS 2014 and higher, they added an even a newer feature called the style spline. And I consider the style spline a game changer when it comes to surface modeling and creating really smooth curves. So the style spline, it's sketched a little bit differently than uh, the traditional spline. So instead of drawing uh, points on the spline, I'm actually sketching uh, vertices that control the shape of the spline. So this is similar to the way uh, curves in Alias and Rhino work. And I can add as many of these points as I need. I can right click or click the curve and change its degree here. Its degree is the number of um, these control vertices. But if we turn on the curvature combs, no matter what I do to this, this spline, I can't get it to have any dips or spikes or bad curvature. It's always going to be smooth. And this is the real power of the style spline. However, the style spline, it can't make as sharp of bends as the two-point spline can, or the, the traditional spline tool. See how sharp that bend was? If I was trying to try and sketch that with the style spline, you know, I can, but it's, it's a lot less controllable. 
So if I have a really tight curvature, the, the traditional spline might be the best bet, but for big, gentle, flowing curves, the style spline, new in 2014, is definitely the way to go. So we can change the defaults, so that way we have a, a better color. I use that dark purple color. The interpolated spline tool, best practice, always a two-point spline and manipulate the handles to match the shape. Three-point, when you start manipulating that middle handle, you can get yourself into trouble. If you do need a third point in your spline, consider using the control polygon to better control the shape of the spline and prevent these kind of dips. That new 2014 style spline, the game changer in my opinion in surface modeling. Remember that the curve is sketched through points and not by points on the curve. We can add and subtract uh, vertices or these control points by changing the curve's degree. The curve's degree is the n number of control points minus 1. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This makes a degree 4 curve. Thanks for joining us this week on Surfaces and Splines. Follow the Damani Group on LinkedIn. We'll be posting new videos. Thanks.